here. Take a stand and face the devil. Yeah, you're, you're right here. Um, let's see. So I'll turn around a little more. So I'm up to it. And then um, come right here. Face her. Yeah, face her. And will you come a little bit like right here? Right? And then you come over here. Right here. Right next to her. Okay. So greed represents your average Christian. Right. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, not average Christian, average person in general, right? Every person has a God-sized hole in their heart, meaning that they, they all want... Right, so basically, greed represents just your average human, right? So basically, we all have a God-sized hole in our heart, meaning that we all want that spiritual experience. We all want to like, okay, yeah, I want to... I know there's something more to life, right? So, subconsciously, right, she's, she's calling out for God, but she doesn't even know it. But she's like mourning for that relationship with, with your creator, whether she knows it or not. So she represents just your average person, right? That wants to seek God, but she doesn't know it's Christ, whoever it is, but she wants that spiritual experience. And so the Father, Rob represents the Father, right? Because the, the Bible says uh, you can't come to Christ without, without the Father drawing you first. So basically, the Father sees that, okay, with a sin, understanding to breathe. Right. Um, I need one more person. I'm so sorry. Sweet job. Volunteer. Andrew, you. Yeah. You got it? Okay. Right. Oh, you got it. Yeah. So you can leave another right here. So you can face her actually. I'm sorry. So she represents Christ because Christ is our mediator. Right. So when the Father tries to reach us, right. The, me the only way to get to the Father is through Jesus Christ. So Christ is our mediator, right? But he's trying to bring understanding to that person. So Jesus Christ, our mediator, represents like a filter, right? So the Father is getting Bree's attention, right? Through understanding, knowledge, etc. So, but that has to go through the filter of Christ. If you don't have that filter, can you, can you wait real quick? If you don't have that filter, the Father is going to try to get Bree's attention and then Brandon, <laughs> I hate saying representing the enemy, he's, he's gonna come over here and then whisper to Bree and say, yeah, you're getting this knowledge, but it's not really from, you know, Jesus, it's from something else. So he's, the enemy is telling Bree all these things because there's no filter to filter the knowledge that the Father's trying to get at, right? So if you don't have a filter, you're gonna be easily deceived, right? So basically, she, he's whispering all these things, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so, come, come over here. And then Jesus is over here, right? Do this. Knocking. Knocking. So, Bree is hearing knocking, right? Meaning that she, she, she hears something, like she knows in the spiritual realm, something trying to get her attention. But the voice she's hearing is actually from the enemy, saying like, no, that, that knock is from me. You have to follow me. Do all these things. Wow. And so what the enemy does, he gives you the desires of your heart, but the heart is deceitful, you can trust it. So, for example, right, it's like, let's see, so the enemy is whispering to Bree, like, okay, yeah, so Bree, like, um, yeah, you know, like, your ancestors, you should really honor them, right? They're actually all around you right now, uh, making sure that you get straight A's in school, all these things. They, they push you to do all these things, but you have to honor and pray for your ancestors, okay? So, she's, getting, she's being heard all that from the enemy, and Jesus, notice how Jesus isn't barging his way in. She willfully, you know, not only heard that, but she's going that way. So Jesus is going to be knocking, right? But he's not going to force his way into the relationship, right? Hold on just a minute. So the reason why sometimes God takes so long to uh, reach us, right? Whether it's 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, when you're 35, 40, because we have to receive the knowledge of the filter first, which is Christ, right? Mm. So obviously, right, when we see, when it comes to um, filters, Christ, not through religion, but for relationship, right? So not that he loves us, he has to wait for us to get the knowledge of the filter, right? We see in the Old Testament, right, when Samuel's mother gave him Eli, and then when the God told uh, Samuel, you know, Samuel, he, he woke up, and what did he do? He immediately went to a flesh source, and he was like, and, and Eli was like, no, like, I, that wasn't me, go back. So, sorry, I had my nose, I should, I was just Take your time. Right here. So Eli, 
Samuel's mother gave him to Eli, right? The high priest. Who, who's our high priest? Jesus Christ. Samuel went to go lay down, and God called him Samuel. Samuel got up because he had no knowledge of who God was. So he went to Eli, someone physical in the flesh, getting a signal from God without knowledge. So Eli was the mediator because he was the high priest, just like how Christ is our high priest. So Eli told him to go to sleep, and if you hear from him again, say, speak, Lord. Someone had to interpret God's knowledge. So God can tell you all these things, right? But what's your filter, though? You have to make sure Christ, and the Christ is the word. So you, if you have all this spiritual knowledge, but the word is your foundation, you're going to be deceived. So, you know, God be trying to speak to us. And when he tries to speak to us and you have no filter, you'd be running into new age, you'd be running into drugs. Wow. Because you're trying to get that spiritual experience, but you don't have that filter. Mm. So if you don't have Christ as your filter, you're going to be deceived and going to other things. Mm. That's why the Bible says to what? Try and test every spirit. Because that every spirit of God. Mm. Yeah, this is deep. Hold on. Take your time. Okay, so during this time, right, the enemy is telling Bree all these things, you know, worship your, your ancestors, all these things, right? And so Bree may wake up in 10 years, right? She may have that moment of kind of like, oh, maybe Jesus Christ is real, but she's been indoctrinated for 10 years by the enemy. So she's been so poisoned towards her true creator that she's going to think the father is the enemy. So when people are trying to wake her up, the enemy's like, you know, like, oh, well, Bree actually, like, the person that Jesus speak over there is trying to get you away from the real truth. You can't listen to, to that guy. And she's been poisoned by that for so many years that when the when her actual father tries to reach out to her, she thinks it's actually the enemy. So, 10 years have passed, right? So the enemy's not only speaking to her. I need one more person. I'm so sorry. I need one more person. Anyone? So not only is the enemy here, now we have strong ones. Mm. So, just come over here and place your hand on Greek. It's one hand, right? So now, not only is she deceived, but she has a strong A strong load is like, this is why when we go street preach and like people get uh, triggered and manifested, that's, that's a strong load. Because they, they literally can't help, they, they, don't, they don't even think before they act. And that's why they read like, no, I'm a Christian, why are you doing all this stuff? It's a strong load, right? So now she has a strong load. And she's being deceived by the enemy, right? She's being deceived, yeah. And then Jesus is still in the back, but she's but Jesus is far from her. She's not reprobate. You know, she's not, you know, too far gone, but Jesus is still in the background, you know, still knocking, right? She's Jesus is still knocking, right? So she's still being deceived by the enemy, right? The father is still the father, he's still doing all these things, right? And so let me see here, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And and this is why God is so good. I truly believe there are some people who has, he, he has predestined, and he's just looking at them and he's like, man, that guy is not coming back to me. <laughs> like, this guy is, he, like, I, 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 I hate to say it, but like, I'm not saying like a dumb claw, but kind of yeah. just like, bro, like, you keep going that way, and I'm showing you all these signs, and you're still not coming towards me, okay? So it's like, I have to do a divine move to make we come to me, right? Uh, so basically, it's like, okay, well, now the Father has to, now, it's not so much about sending, like, you know, like a, uh, it doesn't have to be a dream, an angel, necessarily. He, the father would be like, okay, I need an intercessor. I need to get someone that actually knows God to pray for Bree, right? So, I need one more person. I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, the father puts Bree on Samuel's heart to pray for her. So now he's like praying for her salvation and everything. And when he prays, those demons that are attached to Bree, they don't necessarily leave her because they still have legal access. She hasn't repented and been delivered. Amen. But that demon's uh, hold on her would get loosened. Her. The demon's still there per se, but she'll have a moment of clarity where she'll kind of be like, oh man, like maybe the Bible is true. Maybe, maybe I do have to give, give my life to Christ. And that's through prayer, right? And the reason why when he's praying, it, the Bible says it's like smoke, it's like incense, like how in the Old Testament, the uh, temple, it was like smoke. And in the spiritual realm, when he's praying, the enemy's seeing that and he gets scared because where, where there's smoke, there's fire. And when the fire comes, that's when Jesus shows up and the demons don't want to be there when, when Jesus shows up, right? So when, she, when he's praying, right, and then she's like, you know, kind of have this moment of clarity. The reason why when we deliver people and like people manifest and the demons are like, please, I don't want to leave, please, please, please. Because those demons have to, to report back to their daddy, Lucifer, and Lucifer's going to punish them for leaving the assignment that he put on that person. Wow. 
So they have to go back to the pit where Lucifer is, and Lucifer's gonna punish them for leaving their assignment that the enemy put on the breed. That's why these demons are so, like, please don't send me back. Yeah, the pit is terrible, but Lucifer assigned them to breed. So now those demons have to pay for that. So obviously, he, Samuel's praying, you know, like the, the hold is kind of like off, like she's still, she's having that, that moment of clarity, right? And again, you know, she may have some moments where she slips, go, goes back and forth, but she has a moment of clarity, you know? And then now, so Samuel, imagine, right, being led by, by the Holy Spirit. He's like walking randomly, right? And the Holy Spirit tells Samuel, he like, he, he's walking one day. He's like, you're walking on the street, take take a left, Samuel, take a left. Take a right, take a right. And he ends up at this bus stop, right? And the breeze on the bus, right? And Samuel, being Holy Spirit led, sits right next to Bree. And the demons are so mad right now. They're like, bro, like, I can't believe this has happened. But right now, Samuel's sitting next to Bree, and for the first time ever, Bree actually hears the gospel for, for the first time. At the enemy, be mad. Be mad, exactly. The enemy's furious, because now he's actually hearing the gospel for the first time. And all those demons are kind of scared too, right? So basically, when he's telling him the gospel, right, she's receiving it because of the prayers, any woman person. <laughs> anyone, anyone. Right. Andrew. So where where the enemy was, an angel comes in, in replace of it. Mm. So now the angel's right there. So now, after he preached the gospel into fertile soil, now he's actually receiving the word and the, and the angel's actually helping by the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, helping, you know, re receive that word. Mm. And, it's, and he's helping, like, the enemy not to distract me, right? Any spiritual distraction, nothing like that. So he's telling her the gospel for the first time. She's, she's receiving it. And now, like, the demons are scared because they're realizing, oh, now she's coming to the truth. And now, you know, the enemy uh, and the demons, right? They're, they're still there, per se, right? And they're doing a last minute resort and, and like trying to like tell Green like no these Jesus freaks aren't what you think they are you can't you can't go over there right but when you're predestined to be born again there's nothing that the demons can That's stop right. you know wow. when you're predestined to be born again you will be born again right Amen. but we can't be stubborn right it may take a minute right but God's gonna make sure like you know what whatever happens we will hear that message right and so finally Jesus come over here so she 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 receives the gospel and now she has a filter, so when she reads the word, she actually can get understanding. Because again, like the Father was trying to give her knowledge, but you don't have Christ as the mediator and the filter, you won't be able to understand the word. So now when Christ is your mediator, now she can actually understand the Bible. And now God is God's for who could be against her. So now she's reading the Bible for herself, now she has Jesus Christ as a mediator and the Father, and now she can receive the Holy Spirit, right? And then she'll get deliverance, the demon leaves, the enemy obviously will keep tempting her and all these things, she's still in the flesh. But the point that I'm trying to make is that, you know, God loves us so much that when you got saved randomly that one night, all of this was happening behind the scenes for each and every one of us. So, like, you know, if God was... The enemy was was playing checkers and God was playing chess. Mm -hmm. So basically, like the enemy thought, you know, he could like deceive, like you know, deceive God and trying to get you know the soul. But God behind the scenes was actually playing, you know, being more you know smart and making sure what he did made sense to win Bree's soul, right? So even for all of us, right, God was doing things like the sending angels and to fight the demons that were attached to you. And, and many of these atheists who are mad at God, I promise you, most of them are alive still because someone's praying for them. Yeah. Right. Keep it above. Yeah. So these people who are angry at God, mad at God, they're still alive because someone, the intercessor, I forget the intercessor, Sam, who was, was praying for, <laughs> for that person. So seeing that the power of prayer is so crucial, y'all, like, never stop praying for your family. I think someone said it before earlier. Don't stop praying for your family because all this is happening behind the scenes. So keep praying for your family because when you pray, God's hearing it. And that, you know, it's not, your prayers aren't being sent in vain. God's hearing them. But again, God has to wait, right? God has to wait for that perfect time for your family members, your friends to be saved, and all this happening behind the scenes. So when you see like people who are mad at God and who aren't in Christ, just imagine like this is what's going on, right? And the only way to combat that is not when you know fire against fire, but by loving them, right? So when they do you wrong, you love them. And that makes them feel convicted, you know, like uh, coals on their head, right? Yeah. When you give them uh, food and water. Yeah. And that's when the that's when the demon lifts out their hand. Because yeah. the power of God is just too strong enough. Yeah. No one can love yeah. their enemies uh, without the Holy Spirit. Wow. So when they're convicted, they're like, man. Uh, they're like, yeah. Yeah. So basically when we see people again, because we were just like 
average person, but imagine if it was like an atheist or some mad guy and all this stuff, heart to heart. And I know a lot of people like that, right? Yeah. And I'm like, God, I don't know how you're going to do this because <laughs> this is a assignment for me. Yeah. I don't know how you're going to I know you're using me in some capacity, <laughs> but like, I don't know how I'm going to be able to get out. Put the gospel, he rejects it. And God's like, you know, um, King uh, Saul was killing Christians. And if, if you were living at that time, you probably thought he was a reprobate, yeah. you know? But God can use anyone, right? So seeing behind the scenes how God is so merciful, we're all, he foreknew us and he also predestined us to be born again, right? Before we were born in his mom's womb, we were, we, he knew us, meaning we were with him, right? So it's like realizing that, okay, like, if I, if I know for sure the degree, you know, is supposed to be with Christ, I'm gonna put my trust in Christ that she will come to the faith. Not being impatient, but knowing that the devil's time is short. That's why he's doing so much to all these souls, like especially kids. Because the Bible says that if you make any of these young ones stumble, it's better to put a milestone, a millstone to be on your neck and to drown in the sea. So seeing what the world is doing to the kids, the kids are the next generation. So we have to understand that he's attacking the kids. Because again, when you attack the kids, it's way harder for those yep. kids to come to Christ. Yep. It's so much, and the enemy knows that. Yep. And one more thing, right, the enemy, the demons, sometimes know you're calling more than you. Yeah. So they see like, oh man, this this person's uh, called to be an apostle, a pastor, yeah. a mighty evangelist. Like this person called to be to win souls. Many are called, but few are chosen. Yeah. You're called to do that, right? And the ones that are chosen choose God. So it's like, okay, are you going to use that free will to obey God or leave the call? Don't pull a Jonah and run away. Yeah. So it's like, okay, realizing that, okay, like all these things happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know. So it's like, okay, realizing that, okay, ways of a child the way they should go. And they're never apart from it. And that's why we have to protect our kids because the enemy's coming at the kids yeah, hard. Very and I'm hard. telling you, man, it's so way harder to, I, I hate saying convert, but show them the truth and they accept it when it's harder when they're uh, older, when they've been in darkness all that time before, you know? So again, making sure that we set an example for people younger than us, you know? Because they'll go on TikTok, you know, naked girls all around, spirits entering in them, all these things, right? So making sure that we stay in communion with the Father and realizing that when people do us wrong and right, like, people who we want saved are doing us wrong, just realize all this is happening. So I was like, okay, Lord, like, I see what you're doing. I'm gonna be patient and knowing that, you know, if God's for us, we'll be against us. Pray your words, keep praying for your unsafe family members, your unsafe friends, because all this is happening in the background. So, Amen. Amen.